This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1633. Does your brain predict your financial success? By John Asaraf of MyNeuroGym.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I read to you from the best personal finance blogs on the web, with the author's permission, of course. For now, let's get right to today's post and continue optimizing your life. Does Your Brain Predict Your Financial Success? By John Asareff of MyNeuroGym.com. Does your income match your effort or does it feel sort of stuck? Many people experience a plateau in their earning potential, even when they're working harder than ever. But guess what? It's not your intelligence or your skills or even your boss. Your income may be stagnating because of your brain. In addition to all of the great stuff your brain does, sometimes it's kind of a hindrance. This is partly because brains just love automation. Thinking takes a lot of energy, the energy you might otherwise be spent hunting for food or fending off predators. You, like most of us, probably shop at a grocery store. Our brains just haven't caught up to the fact that food is easy to get. Your brain is conservative with its energy use because it was necessary for survival hundreds of years ago. Instead of using conscious thinking processes, you have automatic patterns and habits. There's a little part of your brain that actually predicts how much you will earn in the future. It's called the frontostracial pathway. Its fortune-telling powers arise because it relies on all the information from your past. Often, your past does determine your future. Here's why. The frontostracial pathway holds onto your hidden self-image or your non-conscious identity. This image of yourself drives behavior more strongly than your conscious decisions and desires. For example, people who win large sums of money in the lottery are very likely to be broke again after a short amount of time. Increasing their wealth overnight without first shifting their identities causes most lottery winners to return to their pre-lottery states. It's not because the winners aren't smart or don't have skills. It's because there's a financial set point in the brain. Your set point is your comfort zone. It's an accumulation of data from your past that your brain uses to predict and drive you towards a certain income level. If you've been earning the same amount for the last 10 years, that income level is part of your hidden self-image. And if you try earning more by breaking out of your comfort zone, a little alarm will go off in your brain. Your brain and big change. You have a teeny brain called the hypothalamus, and it's big on maintaining homeostasis. It functions kind of like a thermostat. When your hypothalamus senses a big change, it immediately wants to get back to the set point. It influences your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors to get you back to your comfort zone. The more your frontostracial pathway enforces a belief, the more it sets in with your hidden self-image. Perhaps you have a conscious idea of the income you wanna be earning. If it's a lot more than what you have been earning, you're competing with a strong unconscious sense of self. It's in the background, subtly causing you to maintain whatever level of financial achievement you've conditioned your brain to expect. The latest research shows that any change in the brain is interpreted as stressful, regardless of whether it's a good change or a bad change. Any big change activates the fear center, your amygdala. When that little guy lights up, it makes you do one of three things, freeze in your tracks, fight the change, or run away from it. How to overcome your set point. If you wanna make a change in your life, you have to get your frontostracial pathway on board. When your non-conscious self matches your conscious image and desires, you'll start earning what you desire. Rather than trying big changes, research suggests that small changes in your thoughts or behaviors won't activate your amygdala. Visualization is a fantastic small change to make in your thinking. If you imagine yourself after you achieved the success you want, you activate the nucleus accumens and insula. These are the motivation centers in the brain. They get you excited to take action on reaching your goals. Want to try a thought exercise? Imagine yourself sitting in a Hollywood cafe. 
a famous producer comes up to you and introduces himself. He then tells you that he's producing a new Hollywood movie. He saw you from across the room and he thinks you'd be perfect for a role. If you like the script and are willing to be in the movie, he'll pay you $5 million. Would you be excited, shocked, maybe even a little scared? Let's assume you agree to accept the challenge after some tests and discussions. You agree to do your very best to play the role. Then you sign the contract and take your script. What do you do first? If you really want to nail the part and have people believe you when you play the part, would you practice reading, acting, and imagining the role? With practice in your mind and through your behavior, you would start to integrate the role. The more familiar the role becomes, the more you become the role. This is exactly what happens when you try to integrate any new role into your brain. When you're working with your self-image and you add knowledge, skills, and ability, your goal and vision become one. Your frontostracial pathway has that new image integrated with the old one. You have changed from the inside out. Do this for the next seven days. To get started activating the part of your brain that manages your self-image, try this trick. Sit quietly for five minutes and see yourself already achieving the financial goals you have for yourself. See it in your mind's eye. Role play with yourself and ask yourself questions. What are you wearing? Who are you with? What are you feeling and doing? What is the entire emotion that you're experiencing? The more detailed you are, the easier it is to retrain your unconscious self-image of yourself. This practice is really the art of repeating something until it feels normal, just like riding a bike or learning the alphabet. Learning how to become the script requires focused attention and spaced repetition, so it really sinks in. So does creating the new self-image you want. What's next? The next step to changing the way your brain thinks automatically is to get clear about your money story. The unconscious rules that we set in our brains that can either keep us from expanding our thinking or propel us to financial success. You just listened to the post titled, Does Your Brain Predict Your Financial Success? by John Asaroff of MyNeuroGym.com. This post reminded me why financial independence starts in your mind. If you believe you'll always be broke, you are less likely to take the actions necessary to improve your situation. But if you see it as fixable, you're empowered to take action. And action over time leads to healthy money habits. And healthy money habits over time create financial independence realities. The phrase thoughts become things sounds so woo-woo, I know. But to me, it's not about magical thinking there seems to be a clear process as to how thoughts become things. Your thoughts manifest as the words you say to yourself and to other people. And when you say these words enough times, they solidify as beliefs. I think you need to truly believe something on a deep level in order to take confident, consistent action. So when it comes to your finances, if you don't truly believe that the little thing you waste money on every day is going to make that much of a difference in your finances, you may be able to use willpower for a little while to resist, but you'll likely not make a long-term change. Same thing with your ability to increase your income. You first need to be able to visualize it and believe it's possible. This to me is where self-control and effort is required. If we put effort into changing our beliefs rather than forcing ourselves to take half-hearted action, it can make a big difference. When action flows from belief, it's easier to commit to that action. And over time, that action becomes a mindless habit. It takes much less effort to stick with it. These habits are the building blocks of our realities and habits are built unconsciously or consciously. That's why listening to a podcast like this one daily can have such a positive effect on your spending and your ability to increase your income because you're getting to the root of your behaviors through your beliefs. And that's a wrap for the Sunday show. Have a great rest of your day and I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.